This is a towel. It costs about five pounds. Here is that same towel on a fancy looking model with matrix glasses. It also costs five pounds. Oh no, wait, it actually costs 695 pounds. This is Balenciaga, a Spanish fashion brand with 1,325 employees headquartered in Paris. It's notorious, not for its pleasant designs, but for its outrageous products. A coffee cup costs 90 pounds. A puffer blanket costs 825 quid. A pair of ruined jeans, 1,950 pounds. And yet, despite these obscene prices and unforgivable ad campaigns, Balenciaga is strangely successful. Revenues have grown from 17 million in 2001 to 2.3 billion in 2022. Which begs the question, why? To find out, I spoke with an expert. Richard Shotton is a behavioral scientist. He's written best-selling books which explain why humans make certain decisions. If you break a convention, you are seen as higher status. This isn't Richard's opinion, it is taken from a 2014 experiment. So the part of her experiment I particularly like is the pilot study. She goes to academic conferences in America in the early 2000s, and when she gets there, she notes down the smartness of dress of people who are arriving. And remember at this time, there is a strong social norm, social expectation that you should dress smartly. She notes down people's style of dress from scruffy to smart, and then goes and asks those people how many citations they have. She was at academic conferences, so these citations are important. A citation is when one researcher's work is referenced by another. So more citations, the more success you are. What she finds is that there is an inverse correlation between smartness of dress and number of citations. So essentially what she's showing is that the super successful academics, you know, the people who appear on talk shows or in the kind of Sunday newspapers, they are the ones who dress scruffily. They are the ones who break the dress convention. But if you look at the uh, junior academics, the people who haven't got tenure, the people who are just starting out in their career, they are much, much more likely to abide by the convention. The paper suggested that powerful people dress differently. Because they have influence and power, they can dress differently from the norm. So the key point here is it's not necessarily dressing down, it's breaking conventions that leads to status. So maybe in an ad agency where everyone dresses scruffily, the convention to be broken would be to turn up in a, you know, full three-piece suit and a bow tie, that would be convention breaking. But in a situation where people are expected to dress smartly, then dressing down might well have the positive effect. The three researchers, they ran a really important follow-up study. They asked 159 respondents to rate the status and competence of a professor based on a short description of them. Some were told the professor conformed to conventions. For example, Phil typically wears a tie to work and is clean shaven. Some were told that the professor did not conform. For example, Phil typically wears a t-shirt to work and has a beard. The respondents rated the non-conforming professor as 14% more intelligent. Those who break fashion conventions are seen as more competent, perhaps explaining why Mark Zuckerberg can don sliders and why Boris Johnson wore this. But Balenciaga, they take this even further. Their clothes aren't slightly different from the competition, they are radically different. Why? Well, Richard thinks it's to do with standing out from the competition. So there is an interesting point here for marketers, which is be very careful about unthinkingly abiding to your category conventions, because it doesn't reflect well on yourself. What you want to do is go out there and identify all the different conventions in your category and think to yourself, which do I need to adhere to? Maybe there's a very good reason. Leave those alone and then which conventions are just there for tradition's sake. And it's that latter group that you want to break. And if you break it, you will project a higher sense of, of, of status about yourself. I had hoped that the designers at Balenciaga were misguided and naive, but they're not. They are leveraging two important biases. First, they know that rich people want to look different to signal their competence. And secondly, Balenciaga know that being radically different from their competitors helps them stand out. Richard has run a study which proves this point. We've got two beer brands who had a very strong set of imagery. And we showed people four bottles of beer. 
three bottles from brand A, one bottle from brand B. And we asked people how much they you know, liked the imagery. And then we repeated the study where we showed people four bottles again with a different group, three from brand B, one from brand A. And what we found is that it was, there was a change in perception of the, you know, the quality of the brand according to whether it stood out from its surroundings or whether it was the majority of the surroundings. And you know, people preferred that brand when it broke the, 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 the convention, when it broke from everything around it. Just like with Balenciaga, the beer brands who break convention are rated as having a better design. Richard's team found a 5% improvement in perceived quality when the bottle design stood out compared to its peers. Look, Balenciaga looks crap, but that's on purpose. By standing out compared to their peers, they capture attention. And this boosts perceptions of quality and helps rich people showcase their influence. But before ending, I have an important disclaimer. The researcher behind this infamous study is Francesca Gino. Currently, she's on forced leave from Harvard as she's being investigated for fabricating data. Now, while this paper I've referenced today, it's not being questioned at all, there is, of course, a chance that it is completely bogus. And I sort of hope it is bogus. I'd love it if these crap designs weren't irrationally smart. But if their revenue numbers are anything to go by, then these cloves, well, they look crap for a reason. And that, well, that makes them far more successful than their conventional peers. This video is a trimmed version of the Nudge podcast, the UK's most popular marketing podcast. If you liked this show, you will love that podcast. So go and search for Nudge wherever you get your podcasts.